What's up everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to create these awesome moving time lapses, these hyperlapses in HitFilm Express. All right, so before I get into all the HitFilm and the editing and all that stuff, I should talk a little bit about how to shoot hyperlapses because shooting them is very different from the, your normal time lapse and uh, it plays a big factor in how you edit it as well. As you can see here, I've got a folder with a lot of images in it. And in essence, the way you shoot a hyperlapse is basically the same as a time lapse, except the camera needs to move between each shot. With time lapses, you need to have the camera in a still position on the tripod, and then you need to take a photo every couple of seconds. However, when you're shooting a hyperlapse, the camera needs to move between each hyperlapse. So what I've done, as I'll show you here, is I've basically taken a photo, moved one step forward, and taken another photo. Moved another step forward, taken another photo. And I've done this a lot and a lot of times until we have all of these wonderful images which we can use in our hyperlapse. Now you'll notice as well that something is very important with the way you have to frame this. You have to have it framed so that one object is in the center of your frame the whole time. That's going to make it much easier when we stabilize our, our hyperlapse in here film. So as you can see here, I've got this, uh, this cross here, which is hard to kind of see here, but throughout the whole time lapse, I've got that in the center. And you, as you can see here, I've got that in the center, even at the very end. And that's going to be our central point of focus. And you need something like that uh, to shoot your time lapse with. But even if you haven't shot your images yet, it's very useful to uh, follow along the tutorial to see how you're going to edit it so that you can shoot it better for your edit. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into HitFilm and see how we can edit all of these photos into a moving hyperlapse. I'm not starting in the editing screen today, I'm actually starting in the project screen, and that's because the way you set up your project has pretty big implications on your hyperlapse. But before we start getting into this, I just want to let you know that all of this editing in this tutorial will be an intermediate level. So you need to have basic experience with it, and it might take some time to kind of grit through all of this, uh, but it'll be all worth it with some amazing results in the end. Anyway, let's go ahead and set up our project. So the resolution is really up to you and it doesn't matter because the resolution is really the resolution of your images anyway, and that will change later. But the important thing you need to set up here is your frame rate. The frame rate is the number of images that it's gonna play back every second. The normal cinematic is 24 or 23.976 as you can see here. And that's what I'm gonna choose because it'll give me the most amount of seconds for all the frames that I have. However, you can also do something like 30 or 60. It's totally up to you. And if you've already got an ideal frame rate you want to have that you're shooting the rest of your video on, for example, you want to make sure that your project frame rate is that frame rate. Once you've got your frame rate and everything set up though, just hit start editing and uh, we'll launch into the edit page. And the way we have to import our time lapse is actually really easy. HitFilm has a really easy way to import these image things. And to do that, instead of just clicking on the import button and importing your images, you can click on this little import special media button, which is to the side here and then you can select image sequence. And once you've done that, just go over and find your folder with all of your images in it and select select folder. I've selected my folder with all of the images in it and you can see automatically in the trimmer here as we played back, it's a little bit laggy, but you can see all of our images have been put together and it's now playing it back at 23.976 frames per second. This is a good start and I guess technically you could say you're done here, but there's a lot of different things we can do to this to make it better. We can stabilize it, add some effects on it as well. So that's what we're going to do. To do that, make it into a composite shot so we can begin our tracking. Just go right click and make composite shot on your media. You'll notice here that now we've adjusted the actual dimensions of our comp as well. As you can see here, I've shot 16 megapixel images at 4,500 by 3,500 pixels but uh, this isn't really a standard video size. So it's HitFilm has kind of calculated the closest that to be uh, 4K UHD, which is 3840 by 2160. And that's good for me. If your time lapse is uh, with smaller images, it might default to 1080p or something like that. But just hit okay and you should be good to go. And you can see that if we use the scroll wheel to zoom out here and we just click on our uh, media file, you'll see it's actually quite a bit bigger than our uh, our frame, but we're going to scale it in later and we're going to do all of that later. For now, let's just go, go back to scale to fit and we're just going to work on the tracking. So to do that, I'm just going to open up my time-lapse 2 media here. And then under this uh, little panel here, you'll see this tracks option and this little plus button. If you don't see the plus button, if you have an older version of HitFilm, you might have to open this uh, menu up so you can see the plus button. But uh, if you see this plus button, then just hit insert tracker there and a bunch of things happened. You'll notice the biggest change is we got this huge track panel over here. So what you can do is uh, drag this, so for example here, 
and it'll just make it easier for us to work with. Of course, you might not have had that big track panel pop up, it might have been somewhere else already. Uh, this is depending on your workspace and you can see all of these workspace options here. You can open and close that track panel like so. But once you've got your track panel, you'll also notice we've gone to our layer here. And in the viewer, you can see we're viewing our final composite, but in our layer, we're just viewing the original source layer that we've selected here. And this is really useful for our tracking because we can track with this layer. I'm also quickly just going to expand this and expand this just so that we get a bigger thing to work with here. Okay, so zooming into our layer panel with the scroll wheel here, we can see we've got uh, two boxes here. By the way, I'm quickly using the hand tool by right clicking and dragging. But we've got two boxes here. We've got a red box and we've got a green box. The red box is the feature we want to track and the green box is the search area. Every frame is going to look for this red feature in the area of the green box. Now, what feature do we want to track? Well, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I've made sure that I've had this cross in the center of my frame the whole time. Throughout the whole video, it's there in the center, and we're going to track that. And you'll also notice that because we're coming much closer to it, uh, it's going to be much bigger at the end. And I'm actually going to start tracking from the end and then go backwards so that we get a much nicer track. So let's go ahead and quickly click in this box and we can drag it around to adjust the position. We can click on the corners to adjust the scale. And I might make this the whole cross or just a section like this. Make sure it's a very high contrast point. So you can see that we've got these lovely edges around here and uh, I might just do the whole cross actually. And we've got these lovely edges around here and it's this lovely contrast against the sky and that's really easy to track. Because we've got a lot of movement in between each frame, it's probably a good idea to have a pretty big search box. So I'm gonna make mine pretty big like so. Now it's time to go into our track settings. You can see here by type, we've got default single point, but we also want to stabilize some other things. You can stabilize scale as well, but today we're also gonna be stabilizing rotation to make sure it doesn't skew to the side like this and it just stays uh, centered along this line. And luckily I've got this other cross here, uh, which we can use to track that as well. So I'm just going to go from type from single point to double points. That will give me those scale and rotation options there as well. Our second point appears there. I'm just going to quickly drag this out of the way so that we can access this like so. And then we're going to zoom out and drag this point all the way down to the second cross here and do the same. Alrighty, so we've got our two points. Let's go back into the method now. You can see there's two options, optical flow and template batch. Uh, optical flow allows for a lot of changing uh, in the kind of feature you're wanting to track and it's very good for most purposes. However, just with testing for my clip, uh, template match works much better. It's much less flexible but because there's so much detail around here that uh, the tracker could accidentally mistake this for, template match works much better. So I'm just going to select template match for mine, but of course you can try both of them and see which works best for you. There are also more options here which you can uh, learn about, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. We're just going to go straight to our track controls. The main ones here are the track forward. And if you're at the beginning and you're just tracking forward, you can just use this button to track your video from the beginning. But because we're at the end, we're going to track it backwards. However, just to start off with, just to gauge where we're at with our tracking, we're going to go one frame at a time, which you can do by clicking the track back one frame and track forward one frame buttons. I'm going to zoom out, get both of our points in the frame. And moment of truth, let's just click track back by one frame. And you can see that it's tracked both of these points. Uh, this one's moved from here to here, and this one from here to here in a similar motion as well. And uh, we can keep doing this frame by frame if we want, or we can track backwards uh, the whole way. But I'm just gonna keep going back one frame at a time until we get an error like this. Oh, so this will happen a lot, uh, especially in this clip, I'm gonna get a lot of errors. And what happens when you get an error is uh, you can just go ahead and zoom in and just reposition it like so and then just continue tracking back like so. I'm quickly going to go from the frame by frame method. I'm just going to go ahead and track it all backwards by playing it and it's going to automatically do it uh, frame by frame until it stops and sometimes it'll stop and that's when HitFilm notices that it's encountered an error. And we can use the full stop or the period key to go forward one frame and you can also use the comma key to go backwards. And you'll notice that indeed this point down here has been misplaced. It's been put down here and HitFilm luckily has stopped that for us. So we can just go ahead and move that here, resize it a little bit maybe, and we can just go ahead and continue tracking. 
Every time it stops, there's an error, or just reposition the tracks, and then uh, we can go ahead and track backwards again, and just keep going through this process until you've tracked your whole video. I'll be with you when I'm done. Alrighty, our track is finally complete. It's now time to do something with this track and stabilize our footage. So just go to step two, apply to layer, and change the purpose from transform, which will apply this track data to some of the layer, and change it to stabilize, which will stabilize its own layer based on this data. Now we've got uh, no option to select the layer, that's because it's gonna track, uh, stabilize this own layer. And by default we have X and Y position, but because we've used two points, we can also do rotation and scale if we want. Now, as you can see from this point moving all the way up like this, you can see that a uh, scale would create this kind of dolly zoom effect. And if that's what you're going for, that's cool. But uh, we're just gonna click rotation for now and that'll make sure it's just aligned and it's all this point in the center. All right, so we've done all that. Let's just hit apply and uh, well, nothing happened. That's cause we're not in our viewer. So just go back to the viewer. That'll view our final composite. And if we play it back, it'll be a little bit laggy, but we can already see that this, uh, this uh, cross in the center has been locked in place and we don't really have any side jiggly rotation movement. It's all been stabilized for us and that's really good. Now you could say you're done here, but there's a couple of things I just wanna show you. First of all, we still have that scale issue. So if we zoom out, we can just scale it back and you still wanna have a little bit of edge over the, over the corners because you'll notice that uh, it kind of wobbles from side to side. You wanna make sure that you don't get any transparent areas in your video. So you might actually have it too small and you might have to scale it up. But either way, make sure it's in the frame properly. And then we're also gonna apply some effects which kind of make it look a little bit more realistic because, because the motion isn't actually there. I just took a still frame on each of these frames, but there's no actual real motion between these frames. And so to replicate this, we're going to kind of add motion blur back to make it look like the camera's really moving through this quite fast. Now there are lots of different ways you could add motion blur, but by far the most accurate effect is the motion blur effect, which is really great that is even available in the HitFilm Express. So just go ahead and search for that and just drag that onto your video. But I will warn you, uh, we do have a 16 megapixel image here and uh, it does get quite laggy. So uh, make sure you have some time to export it and you have a decent enough PC and you're working with good enough resolution. Uh, if you want to, you could export uh, the video without uh, the motion blur and then apply the motion blur effect on that exported video, but it should work okay for me. And uh, as you can see, it's applied some motion blur. It's a little bit wrong in the trees here, but you can see it's applied some motion blur here. And if we go back to a frame like uh, somewhere over here, for example, you can see that it's applied lots of motion blur to these things which are moving in the correct direction as the motion blur is meant to be applied in but you can see that the, uh, the building here is still very sharp, which is what we want. Anyway, that will be it for today's HitFilm tutorial. If you did enjoy this, then be sure to click the like button because it'll help uh, it grow on YouTube and it'll help other people find it. And of course, you can share it with them directly as they'll, well, that would be a great help. You can subscribe to my channel if you want more HitFilm editing tutorials and just in general editing tutorials like this one. But I will see you in the next video. Stay shiny.